I'm 34 and I'm living in my parents' basement. I don't own a car. I don't think I want kids. And even though I'm married and own a condo, we're actually planning on selling it at the moment. I'm currently underemployed and I have already burnt out on one career that followed more of a stable path and one that was more passion driven. By my count, I'm failing at most of the societal markers for reaching adulthood. But I think I finally understand why and how to move forward in a way that doesn't have me repeating this push and pull between finding meaning and feeling stable. So if you're also feeling lost and unhappy in your life and don't quite understand why, stick around and I'll share the simple framework that helped me understand just how normal this is and find a way forward. Hey everyone, I'm Eva and on this channel I do home tours, I talk about trying to build a short-term rental business, I document my property hunt in France, and my journey to becoming an interior designer. I share my finances and the process of trying to live a freer life, and so if that sounds interesting to you, please hit the subscribe button to be notified about my upcoming videos. The stages of normal childhood development are meticulously documented in thousands of books that I hope to never really have to read. And the cliches of midlife crisis are well known. But psychology has historically been pretty neglectful about understanding the stage of early adulthood between roughly the ages of 16 and 40. Psychotherapist Sacha Doyle Biot calls this developmental period in our lives quarter life. It's when you're supposed to get a car, move out of your parents' house, climb the career ladder, find a partner, get married, buy a house, and have kids. But the reality of living through this period in your life is almost never as simple as just checking off all these boxes. And if you do happen to be one of those people for whom it really is just that straightforward, you might still find yourself wondering, is that all there is? And having your very own quarter life crisis. And why is it that so many people in quarter life are having existential crises and yet we still collectively sort of think that we're supposed to have those questions when we're 50. In her book, Quarter Life, The Search for Self in Early Adulthood, Biok explains how we all go through life existing on this spectrum between seeking meaning and seeking stability. Though it is a spectrum, she separates people loosely into being stability types or meaning types. People who go through life really prioritizing the stability side of the spectrum are the kind of people who really try and follow the path set out by society. They check off the milestone boxes. They seem to have their shit together. Maybe they've always done what their parents wanted and never really explored what they really valued themselves. Or maybe they didn't really have a very stable home life growing up and sought to create that stability for themselves. But ignoring their inner values in favor of this external validation can lead to stability types feeling empty inside. And because stability types are so good at masking this, they may not end up having a crisis until later in life, maybe even until midlife. Meanwhile, people who are too far on the meaning side of the spectrum are the ones that society kind of thinks of as unrealistic. They're the artists, philosophers, spiritual seekers, and dreamers. If you're more of a meaning type, maybe you resisted the corporate path, maybe you roll your eyes at the idea of being normal, and maybe you even kind of lack ambition. Meaning types still need stability in their lives, but they struggle to get it without feeling like it's killing their soul. Because it's a spectrum, you might find yourself relating to both meaning and stability types. For example, I grew up in an immigrant household where achievement in school was prized above all else, and maths and sciences were seen as the path to success. In trying to please my parents and seek stability, I've ended up in all sorts of jobs from advertising to branded content to nonprofit communications that were a compromise between those inner desires and those external stability pressures. In the end, they satisfied neither. On the other hand, when I've followed my internal desires more faithfully, I've ended up underpaid and overworked, a common risk when you're trying to make your livelihood from the things you're passionate about. I felt like a up that just can't get it together and wondered why can't I just be happy with a normal job? but we all need a mix of meaning and stability and not only in our work lives. That the goal for all of us, which I write about a lot in the book, is to find a life that feels both stable and meaningful so that we feel both secure and safe in the world and we feel like we have a sense of purpose, that our values are clear and, and we know who we are. So how can we do a better job of creating this balance? Biog outlines four pillars of psychological development and growth in quarter life 
that we can go back to again and again to help us navigate getting to know our true selves and make decisions about how to live our lives. The first pillar is to separate. It involves differentiating yourself and figuring out who you are separate from the people in your life, whether it's your parents, your partner, your religion, etc. It involves transforming certain relationships in your life that used to have a hierarchical power imbalance, like for instance with your parents, to adult relationships where there's a balance of power and there are new boundaries in place to reflect that. For example, maybe when you're thinking about leaving a job and you know your parents are unlikely to feel comfortable with the lack of stability that could bring into your life, you choose not to tell them until after you've done it. This way you'll be less likely to let their opinion influence your choices. The second pillar is to listen. This is about getting clear on your inner voice, your inner needs, your inner desires by being receptive and attuned to what your body wants and needs and where your thoughts take you. Separating and listening are two pillars of quarter life that I have struggled with a lot and still find challenging. I still fight not to fall into the trap of going after accomplishments and career paths that I know will elicit approval and praise from my parents at the expense of my own interests and instincts. At other times, I deny my inner voice out of a need to protect myself from the fear of rejection or failure or regret. After years of listening to the shoulds of society and other people, I find it really hard to trust myself. It feels like the Sisyphean struggle of my life. Biox says that this is a really common struggle for stability types. The practice of trusting yourself after an entire lifetime of trusting others or deferring to others' judgment or deferring to others' perception of you, it takes years. I mean, I'm sorry to say, it, yeah. it, it doesn't mean that progress is not being made every day or every... Which brings us to the third pillar, to build. Building is where we put in the labor, effort, and willpower to build the lives that we actually want. Bayak describes this as creating structures and disciplines and boundaries in our lives that align with our inner listening. It means getting back on the horse when you fall off. And for stability types, this often means deconstructing the false life that you've already built for yourself, letting go of things that no longer feel like you, even while you're still figuring out who you is. She says that, for example, this might involve quitting a job that you know isn't right, even without knowing what's next, and interrogating whether you're doing something as a substitute for what you really wanna be doing. I felt this pretty deeply recently with a few job interview processes I was going through. I was dreading the interviews and felt miserable and like a fraud trying to convince these people that I was the right person for a job that I knew I didn't want. Or last year when I tried to force myself through the first course in Ontario's real estate agent qualification only to realize that I was deeply bored and that it was a seemingly lucrative substitute for what I really wanted to do, which was interior design. One way I see building as it applies to my own life is to just allow myself to enjoy what I enjoy without judgment or criticism. And finally, Biox's fourth pillar of quarter life development is to integrate. This is when you combine and internalize the work of listening and separating and building into a new sense of who you are and how you want to approach your life and relationships. Integrating is also about celebrating your growth and transformation so that you don't take it for granted. Now, these four pillars are not a four-step process, and like Biox says in her book, psychological development is rarely linear you're much more likely to cycle or bounce back and forth through the pillars of separating, listening, and building as you're figuring out who you are and what you want. That's certainly what it's felt like for me over the past 18 months as I've decided to redirect my media production almost entirely to my own projects and mostly leave behind communications and journalism to pursue a certificate in interior design. That said, I know that I likely have more self-discovery ahead of me and hopefully this framework of the four pillars and the stability and meaning type will help me be nicer to myself as it happens in the future. Ultimately, Biox's message is that each quarter life crisis is particular to the person going through it. 
that feeling like a successful adult shouldn't be tied to what we can attain or achieve, but rather by a sense of self-knowledge and by a sense of purpose and of our values. Understanding that struggling to work through how to separate, listen, build, and integrate during this period of early adulthood is a totally normal developmental process as normal as learning to crawl or walk or talk has been so helpful in allowing me to move forward rather than feel stuck or beat myself up over not fitting into a certain mold. Hopefully it'll help you too. When we are at our most depressed, our deepest grief, our greatest pain, there are ways through. And it's not just ways to get back to where we were, but in the understanding of this work, it's actually to get us to the best life we've lived so far. If you want to check out Biox's book, I've linked it down below, along with a couple interviews with her that I found super interesting. If you liked this video and want more of this self-development type of content, give it a like and check out my video about why I started a YouTube in 2023. It touches a bit more on this idea of listening to my inner voice. I'll be back next week with another video. Until then, thanks for watching and be nice to yourself.